And these uh, uh, black troops who had their lives on the line for a country which rejected them between wars, this story was not getting out there. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today I'm sitting down with Jerome Tichilli. He's best known for books like It Usually Begins with Ayn Rand, the first biography of Donald Trump. His latest book is The Roughest Riders, the untold story of the black soldiers in the Spanish-American War. Jerry, thanks for talking to Reason. My pleasure. This is a fascinating book that, as I was reading it, it both made me proud and profoundly sad to be an American. It's mm -hmm. about race relations as they affected black soldiers uh, from the post-Civil War era on. Talk about the Buffalo Soldiers who are at the center of this book. Who were the Buffalo Soldiers? Uh, the Buffalo Soldiers were essentially freed slaves after 1863 who were free in name only. They had no access to the economy. They could not get jobs. So most of them joined the army. In the early 1890s, they wound up fighting Indians out west. And they got the name Buffalo Soldiers from the Cheyenne and a couple of other tribes who said that they fought like buffalo. You know, they, they shot them full of arrows and they still wouldn't die. And of course their appearance with the, uh, the shaggy manes and the dark skin and so on said they looked like buffalo. So the name stuck. It came out. And these guys, the Spanish-American War, uh, which famously features Teddy Roosevelt, he uh, leading the Rough Riders up San Juan Hill, and we'll right. talk about that in a second. You know, this became the first kind of uh, modern war for American troops to be involved in. Right. How did the Buffalo soldiers uh, end up fighting in the, in the Spanish-American War? Well, uh, after the Indian Wars, they came back and America loved them and they were fought, fodder for the wars, but then they had these armed blacks in their modern society and white people resented them. They were afraid of it, you know, these armed blacks, uh, up, uprisings and so on. So at the time, Teddy Roosevelt was agitating after the sinking of the Maine and Havana Harbor to go down and take on the Spanish, even though there was no proof that the Spaniards sunk the Maine. In fact, later technology indicated it was probably an internal Like explosion. a boiler room accident or right, something. Right, exactly. Yeah. The thinking in Washington was that the blacks would be better able to withstand the tropical climate in places like Cuba because of their genetic makeup. So the big battle in the Spanish-American War, which really kind of created a modern, or the first big step of American empire because right. we ended up winning against Spain and we ended up with the Philippines as well as Cuba and Puerto Rico and whatnot. The most famous battle is Teddy Roosevelt charging up with the Rough Riders up San Juan Hill. That's the received history of it. Talk a lot of what the book is about is how that is just completely boulder dash. Um, what really happened on San Juan Hill? Well, it's total nonsense, actually. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt was covered by a bunch of reporters who followed him around, and their job was to promote him and his image. And uh, when he did that, he gave them access. So they were in his camp. Uh, the received image is that there was a hill in Cuba called San Juan Hill, and Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders, who were basically cowboys and a few Eastern Blue Bloods looking for adventure, charged up there and chased the Spanish off. Well, when you start delving into the story, you realize that there were 10,000 Spanish soldiers in the area at the time. The Rough Riders had about 500 total to start with. And I started reading this, and my bullshit antenna started to quiver. I said, how could this have happened? The reality was is that San Juan Hill was the last hill to be taken there. Uh, there were four hills that were fought. The first was called Las Guasimas, named after some trees in the area. And Roosevelt was part of that charge up there with 500 buffalo soldiers. And there was a column of white regulars and black regulars on his right. And Roosevelt walked right into an ambush in that first battle and lost probably about a third of his men. So out of the 500, he's got 350 left now. And the blacks came over and rescued him, along with some white regulars, and took the hill from the Spanish, Las Guasimas. And after that, there was a week delay while we fully landed troops off the boats that had uh, uh, come in off the harbor down there, Santiago Harbor. And there were three other hills to be taken. Uh, the northernmost was a place called El Cane, and it was a town up on a hill. And that was taken by a combination of white regulars and black regulars. The blacks got up there first. There was a long, grueling 10-day war that uh, the blacks got up there and planted their guide on. Uh, simultaneously, there were th uh, three hills over in the San Juan Heights. There was Kettle Hill, slightly to the north of San Juan Hill, 
and then there was San Juan Hill itself. And Roosevelt's Rough Riders were assigned to Kettle Hill, and he was getting wiped out. Uh, the Spanish had superior weaponry. They had these smokeless Mausers that gave off no smoke when they uh, when they were fired, and we had these. Uh, antiquated uh, smoke emitting, uh, mm -hmm. emitting rifles. Which means it's easier for soldiers uh, fighting you to see where you are and yeah. can point in the general direction. Right, we couldn't see where the Spanish yeah. were, because, uh, but they knew exactly where we were because every time they fired a weapon, it was a target. Right. Roosevelt and his, uh, was assigned to Kettle Hill, much to his chagrin, because the main target was going to be uh, San Juan Hill. As they were going up uh, Kettle Hill, Roosevelt's men were being decimated, and uh, he was down to about 50 soldiers. Roosevelt himself was one of the few with a, with a horse, which got snagged in barbed wire up there, so he was forced to get out. It was a steep incline. These cowboys were not infantrymen. They were not soldiers, and the Eastern Bluebloods were not in great shape either. Uh, a contingent, uh, there were four regiments of buffalo soldiers down there, actually went up and, and got up to the top of Kettle Hill first and planted another guide on, buffalo soldier guide on, up there uh, before Roosevelt could get up. He admitted later that, the, that thanks to the blacks and their military acumen and so on, they, they saved the day and they were great warriors and so on. There was another battle taking place on San Juan Hill and they, the people at the top of Kettle Hill, which included Roosevelt and his remaining Rough Riders at this point, can see the action over there. The black buffalo soldiers charged down from Kettle Hill and there was another contingent of uh, black soldiers, buffalo soldiers. Some of them were led by Pershing, a black Jack Pershing. And who was called Black Jack, Jack because Pershing. he he was uh, rare, for, he would openly admire and uh, kind of praise black soldiers' abilities. He did. He considered them to be motivated and uh, patriotic and have great fighting ability. And they got up to the top of San Juan Hill as the, uh, uh, the troops, uh, the black people, uh, black troops uh, from Kettle Hill and Roosevelt try to get up there. They, uh, the Buffalo soldiers had actually gotten there first and planted another one of their guidons up there and the white regulars were right there with them. Roosevelt did not get up to the top of San Juan Hill until the fighting was over. But of course, waiting up there were these uh, six hand-picked reporters uh, one of whom was Stephen Crane, uh, who was the most independent of them all because he was famous for having written Red Badge of Courage. And of course, they gave him the, the big reception and Roosevelt st straggled up there with uh, just a handful of the remaining Rough Riders. But the cameras were focused on him. He was great copy. The media loved him because uh, he was a colorful character, an adventurer, etc. And then he wrote a kind of definitive account of the Spanish-American War in which he was the, the starring uh, soldier. He did, of course, he wrote a book called The Rough Riders. In the book, he admitted that the uh, Buffalo soldiers were you know, great warriors and, and couldn't have won without them, but then later on he started to backpedal from that. Yeah, and let me uh, talk about that, because in, in uh, one of the chapters you, talk, you say, uh, and I'm quoting from you, later Roosevelt softened his praise, uh, saying he had started out saying the black soldiers were an excellent breed of Yankee fighters, then he was like, now they're about as good as a typical Amer you know, white set right. of soldiers. Mm. And then finally he said that they um, only performed their duties well because they were peculiarly dependent on their white officers. And then finally he came to a point where he was saying, and this is a Theodore Roosevelt quote, Negro troops were shirkers in their duties and would only go so far as they were led by white officers. Right. What was, what was asserting itself there? If the, if the story got out, and there was one reporter, a, a, a fellow named Cashin, who was the only one assigned to cover the, uh, the Buffalo Soldiers. Uh, if word got out that they were the real victors there and so on, it would diminish Roosevelt's glory. And, and that's what he was all about, was self-empowerment. And uh, so he started to backpedal and uh, claim that they only did as well as they did because they had white offices. Well, of course, they weren't allowed to have black offices. Mm -hmm. And then uh, later on, he, 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 racism totally uh, took over when he, when he said they were shirkers and he had to pull his gun to keep some of them from moving, uh, you know, heading back down the hill, which was a total fabrication. So it was Roosevelt preserving his image and not allowing anybody else to share any of the glory. What is your goal in writing a book like The Roughest Riders? My goal is I, I see a story which uh, strikes me as total nonsense. And then reading between the lines and uh, really the, this footnote in history about the role of the Buffalo Soldiers has remained that for the most part. I mean, there have been a few other books. Uh, Gail 
Buckley uh, wrote a book called American Patriots, but there's a chapter on the Buffalo Soldiers. And uh, there are a few others, but it was all piecemeal out there. I mean, the research in this book was a, a killer for me. It probably lasted about a better part of four or five years. But I read everything ever written about it. I had uh, Library of Congress material, uh, help from the National Park Service and the Rangers who in charge of the Buffalo Soldier Project. So I got all this stuff together, and I realized that this is an American story which has been buried. And these uh, uh, black troops who had their lives on the line for a country which rejected them between wars, uh, were getting, uh, this story was not getting out there. And nobody else was writing it, so I just decided uh, to go and plunge ahead and do it myself. Do you think that, um, you know, in many ways it was Harry Truman who integrated the troops uh, for the Korean War, mm -hmm. uh, somebody like Colin Powell who I think uh, graduated college at ROTC in 1959, became the, you know, the Secretary of State. Have uh, blacks, at least in the military, have they reached parity with whites? Well, I think they have today, and, and Powell himself said that he never really suffered from a lot of discrimination. He was a light-skinned black, and uh, uh, he grew up familiar with a lot of white culture and so on, uh, so he personally did not see a lot of that. Uh, racism exists in a society, and, and I'm sure that uh, uh, even blacks in the military today, when it's integrated, uh, experience it uh, to a great extent. As you mentioned, Harry Truman, with a an executive order in 1948 ordered the military to be integrated, but even after that it took quite a few years for it to fully happen. During World War II, but previous to that, of course, uh, we had black units uh, segregated from the whites. I think racism is prevalent in this society even today. Uh, and I, I look, I have grandchildren, three, who uh, range in age from 10 to almost 14. And I think of them as maybe the, the first colorblind generation in this country. I mean, they, they all have friends who are Asian, uh, black, and so on, and I don't, they don't even think in those terms. Uh, whether that's true nationally or not, I don't know, but I, I think that's a hopeful sign out there. Well, hopefully uh, your grandchildren and mine will read The Roughest Riders and remember where they're coming from and, and how bad things could be and how much better things can be. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Jerry Ticilli. The book is The Roughest Riders, The Untold Story of the Black Soldiers in the Spanish-American War. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.